So you have to play the infinite game. What do I mean by that? Let me explain. Let me just give you an example, okay? Josh has a closing today. He's been working with a customer for a while, okay, with Rob. Rob is buying a co-op in Westchester. Now, they went on the contract six months ago, okay? And Josh actually started talking to Rob sometimes in January of 2020, two years ago, to be specific, right? It's a long, long time. Versus, Josh is going to have a closing this coming week with Chloe, who he met Chloe in November of last year, 2021, and they have a closing next week. It took only two, three months, right? What a difference. And as you know, you just never know what happens in a transaction, number one. This was a co-op, right? So with Chloe, the management was really on top of it. When it closed some of the application, you know, they gave him an interview within two weeks, got him approved the next day, right? The bank got all the documents from the co-op, so he was able to approve the co-op as well and really schedule the closing pretty much immediately, right? That's why it took only three months from start to finish. Now, with Rob, on the other hand, when he started to look and when, when Josh got in touch with him about two years ago, he wasn't really ready to buy, okay? His credit really wasn't up to a par to really qualify not only by the bank but also by the co-op because as you know when you buy a co-op it is a completely different animal you really got to make sure that the customer is not only qualified by the bank but most importantly by the co-op because in most instances the co-ops are actually more strict on qualification than the bank right so he had to improve his credit he's a young guy so he didn't have that much funds to really you know purchase the place he wanted to because he wanted to get a nice place right it was his first place wanted to get something modern, something a little bit, you know, with some amenities in a better location. So he had to save it up some money, right? And then he had to just, you know, become realistic what his budget is actually and what he can buy with a budget. And it took him two years, right, to put all these pieces together. Now, let me tell you what I mean by infinite game, that in this game of real estate and pretty much in any business, but we're talking about real estate. So let's stick with real estate for now, right? When you're talking to the customer, you have to really play the infinite game, and that means there's really no beginning and no end, right? It's a relationship, it's a friendship, right? And that's ever going. You just don't want friends for one month and one year or one decade. You want to have the friendship forever, right? Now let's think about it for a second, guys. In real estate, do we really sell real estate or do we really solve people problems for profit? That's a little portion of that. But what we do, we build relationship. So really the goal is not to just see people as customers. You got to see them as your friends. For most people, this is very personal. Okay, most people you're probably working with, they the first time buyers, so they're buying a home for themselves, right? So they're buying a home. They're really buying a place where they're going to be creating everlasting memories, you know, with their family, friends, you know, with all the people they, they tend to invite into their home, right? So they're inviting you into their life, right? They're giving you a little peek on the most important journey of really finding the American dream, right? The home for their family. So really, try to make it personal. You gotta stay professional, right? You gotta dress up right. You gotta, you know, make sure that you know what you're talking about, that you have the right information. So you really, you know, help them out at the end. At the same time, make it human, okay? Make it personal. So in order for you, for you to really be successful in this business, don't just look at the people as transactions. Okay, don't just talk to your customers to see if they, you know, really able and willing to buy. And if they're not, just don't, don't talk to them because they're not relevant to you right now. No, you really got to see, you know, where they are in the buying process. And as you know, it's a buying process, guys. It takes time. It's not just like if you decide to buy a pair of shoes, you might go to a store, you know, the next day. You know, try a couple and pick one and pay for it and you're done with it, right? When people buying a home, it's a big investment and not only from a financial point of view but it's also a big investment into their personal life that they buy a place where they're gonna be creating all the memories with the family right so you really gotta take your time with them they number one they they educated they know what they're getting themselves into number two that they, they know the numbers okay they know their budget they know exactly what they can afford and with that budget where they can afford it Right? It's a big difference, you know, if you if you qualify for a half a million versus a million bucks, right? So really get them comfortable, right? Get them educated 
And this thing takes time. For a lot of people, on the average, it takes about six months. Sometimes, like Robert, sometimes they might not be ready. Maybe they need to help with credit. Maybe they need to save up some money, right? Maybe that's, that's something specific, you know, which they need to do. But you got to be there for them, guys. For us in real estate, it's not just helping people buying and selling a real estate and being there at that moment, even though, yes, that's very important that you are there at that moment when they're ready to go. However, in order for you to be there at that moment, you really got to be there at every single moment on the journey. Okay, and one way to really one way to really scale it for you, right? Of course, you can call them, you could text them, you can send them something of a value, you can meet them, right? Be their resource and source because even though after really buying a place, are there you know many things which they don't know about and which they need help with, right? Maybe it's time for them to to file their taxes. How do they file their taxes when now they're actually owning a place? As you know, owning a place, there's many benefits for home ownership. Right? You got so many tax benefits, tax you know, write-offs. They could write off the interest. They can write off you know, most of the capital improvements, right? etc. Really make sure that your buyers, the new homeowners, they are aware of it. And they're really educated about it. Along the way, if you're owning a place, as you know, something's going to break down. Right? Maybe the heat's not going to work. They got to get that fixed. Now, they never owned a place before. They were most likely renting from someone, so they didn't need to know, number one, how maybe they can fix it themselves, right? Not everybody's handy. Or number two, who they should call. So really, are you there, you know, all along, all along the side, right? All the way, not just when they're ready to buy a place. Not just when they, you know, ready to close in a place and you go to the closing. But are you really there for them? Because guys, if you are, Trust me, they will appreciate it. And you know what? The best and the easiest business you can get is from people who already trust you, who already experience how you work, who you are, and what you can do. Okay, so they'll be giving you a lot of referrals. So I encourage you, let's don't just make it transactionable, let's make it humane. This is not a short term game. Don't just do it if you want to make the money and get out. I would say don't even get in, right? Because most likely you're really not going to get the right traction to be successful. So really don't do it for short term. Do it for long term, right? Preferably forever, right? So if you get in a business, you got to stay in business. If you don't like people, if you don't like to make friends, if you don't like to help people, maybe this is not the business for you and it's okay, right? There's different aspects of real estate. You don't have to be a real estate agent, right, to be successful in real estate. Maybe you could be a real estate investor, a completely different, uh, you know, animal, right? So I hope this was helpful, guys. I would love to hear your challenges, you know, really what you're going through. And if there's something, you know, I can help you with, please reach out to me. Of course, if you can like this, because it's going to help us out with the algorithm, right? And the more people see this, you know, the more stuff we can do. So like it, subscribe, and share with your friends and family who can benefit out of it as well. So.